Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to go over how you can activate a coming soon or maintenance page only on selected pages. I will go over how to do this with only using code. So this will be a little bit more of an advanced tutorial. But don't worry, I will walk you through all the code so you can better understand how everything is working. Let me show you exactly what we're going to be going over in this tutorial. Let's say we have a website like this and when a user clicks on the about page, I would like them to see a coming soon page because let's say I'm working on this page on the back end, but I only want to show it to people not logged into the website. So you can see I can click on the other pages and they go to the regular page. If I click on about, it will go to this coming soon or maintenance page. So after doing some research into this topic, I have not found a good plugin or anything along those lines that will activate a coming soon or maintenance page only on selected pages. Normally with Elementor or some other plugins, the maintenance page or the coming soon pages is a global setting. So the user on the whole website is going to see the coming soon. Like I said, I haven't seen one where you can just target specific pages. So that's why I wanted to create this video because in some use cases, you may only want to have a coming soon page on selected pages. The good news is that we could pull this off with any WordPress website. This isn't going to require any premium or pro plugins or anything along those lines. This could all be done just by using WordPress functions. That means you can add this code into your themes function file, or in this case, I like to use this free plugin called code snippets. I prefer to use this plugin for all of my custom coding when developing a website. This plugin gives you the ability to turn on and off code in a visual interface. I'm going to separate this video into three different parts. Part one is going to go over how you can pull these redirects on normal web pages. So in most use cases, it's going to be just your standard pages, not any sort of blog pages or anything like that. Whereas part two, I'm going to cover how you could do these redirects on your blog post. And finally, in part three, I'm going to show you how to use an array so you can have cleaner code and include multiple pages for the redirects. So let's just jump right into it. Now I'm going to give you a quick overview of how useful this code snippets plugin is. So as you can see on this test website, I have a whole bunch of different types of functions. And the good thing is you can toggle these things on and off. So let's say in this case right here, we have in step one, I wanted to cover how you do your page redirects. So as you can see right here, I have them separated out by blog post and the pages. So if I click on this right here, this is the function code that we're going to be working with in step one. And as you can see right here, you can add the word tags down here as like a redirect. So that keeps it really organized in this uh, plugin. So if I go up here and select only the redirects, now it's a very clean interface. Whereas if you add this code into your themes function file, it's just going to be like a long list of code. And unless you commented it out, it's going to get a little messy. That's why I like using this plugin because you could easily toggle on and off different functions and they give you the ability to filter out by tags. So to make this easier, I'm just going to keep this at redirect so you can just see the ones that we're going to work with right here. So again, this redirect is only going to happen when the user is not logged in. So let me give you a case where I'm logged in as an admin right here. And if I click on the about page, you can see it goes to the regular about page. Whereas before it goes to this coming soon page. So this is all just done by using code. So let's jump right into the code. I'm going to walk you through step by step what all this stuff means. So in code snippets, you can add the title right here. So in this case, I just called it page coming soon redirect. And I'm going to have all of this code in the link in the description below. So you can just copy and paste it. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this is all just using WordPress function code. So you can use this on any WordPress website. So I'm quickly going to go through what all this means and how we can actually start setting this up for your website. So the first line is you need to add an action. And this right here, you're just going to want to keep this at template redirect. This is a WordPress thing. And right here, this is your function name right here. So where it says redirect to specific page. So if you're going to have um, a lot of these different redirects, you need to make sure that this is always unique to the function. So if you try to declare this in a different uh, function somewhere else, you're going to start to get bugs. So I'm just going to call this redirect to specific page. And then down here, you just need to call it function. Just copy this right here. And then it's a simple if statement. So if the page is the about page and the user is not logged in, it's going to redirect where this right here is a WordPress function. I have it just redirecting to a coming soon page. And then this code right here is telling the browser and Google or any search engine that this is a 302 redirect, which means it's just a temporary redirect. 
So as you can see, I'm gonna have all the redirects just go to this coming soon page. And this right here is just the simple Elementor template coming soon. Or if you don't wanna have it coming soon, if you're gonna do a maintenance mode, you can just change this to, you know, uh, maintenance mode, we'll be back online soon, whatever it may be. Um, but I'm just gonna have everything redirect to this page right here, wiki demo testing coming soon. So the only things that you're gonna normally be changing in this code is just what page it's gonna be and where it's gonna redirect. So there's three different ways that you can target a page with a WordPress code. So let me scroll down here and I'll leave a link to this page in the description below as well. So the way it works is WordPress gives you the options to target pages three different ways. So you have a page ID, you can do the post title or page title, and then this is the slug. I'm gonna walk you through what all that means right now. So a page ID is the most foolproof way to target a page because your page IDs don't change. Whereas if you change your title or your slug, these redirects might not work in the future. So you can choose which way you wanna go. Um, I would say in most cases, if you know you're not gonna change your titles, just stick to the title or the slug. It just makes it easier to understand than the page ID. I'm gonna show you how you can easily get these three different values and then you can make a decision which one you wanna use. The most complicated one is targeting your ID. So let me show you how to do that. If you are on your page right here, this is your about page. And if I click right here where it says edit page, you see this uh, ID right here where it says post equals this number? That right there is your page ID. So in this case, it's 6733. So let me just copy that. And so you could, in theory, instead of having the word about, you can just paste in page is equal to 6733. So let me pull this back up here for a test. If I click on about, there you go. It goes to the coming soon page. So here's an easy way to grab your title or your slug. So just find your page name right here that you want to redirect. Click on this button, quick edit, and right there. So there's your title, about, and your slug is about. Whereas you can have one a little bit more complicated. You can see right here, you can have it with spaces. So in this case, it was three words, or as a slug puts the dashes in the middle. But we're just gonna go back to the quick edit. So you have the ability to change to the about slug or the title. So I, I prefer the title. So like I said, as long as you know you're not gonna change your title very often, this is gonna be a much easier way to, to manage this stuff. So we can put that back in at about and hit save. Make sure that that redirect is working. So services and the about goes to the coming soon. Perfect. If you need to add multiple redirects within this function, you can do that by just copying this if statement, pasting it down here. And let's say we wanna, this advanced post queries, let's pick on that one. So let's do advanced post widget, sorry, and just copy that in here, hit save. Now let's do a test to make sure that if the user's not logged in and clicks on about or goes to the advanced post widget page, that they're redirected. So let me grab that URL, copy that, open up a new thing. Let's do another test. So here's the about page that redirects. Now let me paste in this custom URL here. And there you go, that redirected automatically, you can see. Now let's test it on the back end where we are logged in, make sure that the code is working. So the about goes to the correct about page. And let me paste in this advanced post widget. And there you go, that's not redirecting when you're logged in. If you're gonna have a whole bunch of pages uh, redirecting, what I recommend is using the array tool. So that is in step three, so you can use the timestamp below to jump to the section three, where I show you how to clean up the code a little bit so you don't have a whole bunch of if statements. Here in step two, we're gonna use very similar code, but instead of targeting a page, we need to target uh, right here, a blog post. So let me go back into the code right here and under code snippets, I just called it blog post coming soon redirect. And you're gonna notice that pretty much everything is the same besides two different things. This right here, remember I told you in the beginning of the video, this needs to be unique to your function. So I'm gonna to toggle in between the blog post and right here, the page. I'm gonna do it so you can kind of visually see what's changing. So you could see right here, I called the page redirect, redirect to specific page, whereas here I needed to call it redirect to specific post. Like I said, it needs to be different because if it's not, you're gonna run into bugs. So we just need to change that to post and same thing right here, redirect to specific post. And this right here is the only thing that's really different between targeting blog post 
and pages within um, WordPress. So you can see right here, if I go to the page coming soon, you see right here where it says is page. That is a WordPress function that can just target pages. So WordPress treats pages and blog posts uh, totally different. And so you've got to target it with a different code. So let's go back into here. So instead of saying is page, it needs to say is single. That means single blog post. So anything that you have under post right here, these are all considered single. So everything else is exactly the same. So you can see right here is single blog post. And in this case, I just have it called sticky column. I click quick edit and you can see right here title sticky column. So I just copied that into here and it's the same as that code. We have it and is not logged in redirect to the coming soon page and just hit save right here. Let me go back into here, grab that URL and let's do some testing. So as you can see on the front end of the website, it works correctly. So it's not redirecting to the coming soon page. Now let me go as if I'm not logged into the website and go to that page and you can see right there, it's coming soon. So that's how you can target just blog post. Again, you need to change the function name here and just make sure this says is single, not is page. I would say in most use cases, you're going to want to just use this sort of functionality on pages rather than blog post. Here in part three, I'm going to show you how to use an array so you can have much cleaner code to include multiple pages for your redirects. So like I said in step one, you don't want to have a case where you have a whole bunch of these different if statements. Uh, it's going to bloat the code and honestly, it's much better to just use an array. So let me show you how to do that. It's very similar to what we have here. You just need to change a few small lines. So let me go ahead in here paste in the array and let me show you what's different. So this is the same right here. The function name is page. Now you just have this little section of code right here. Everything else is exactly the same. So you just say array and you put these in quotes. So you have an about comma space and then you have your next page. So let's go ahead and add, let's throw in um, resources as well. So I can just take this right here as the slug. So I can just copy that. Let's go back into here. So you put a comma, do an apostrophe right there, resources. Hit save changes. Here we are on the front of the website and let's make sure that that array is working correctly. So it should be about resources and contact all go to the coming soon or maintenance page. Let's do some testing, click about, yep. Resources redirected and contact. So I recommend using an array if you know you're going to need multiple redirects. And at any moment, you can just go ahead in here and just delete one. So if you wanted to, let's say you're done with the contact page, making your edits, you could just remove that, hit save, and let me open it up the front end. So now only about and the resources should go to the coming soon. So about, resources, and contact should go to the regular contact page. Yep, there you go. So I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you were able to make this work for your website. And that's it for this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. This is Mark from Wiki Design.